Hi, I'm David the Bruce. This is Jungle Queens and today we're showing you a series, a 13-part series called, wouldn't you know, Jungle Queen, yes. And we have as our Jungle Queen in this particular one, a major Hollywood actress whose name is Ruth Roman. Now there are two other amazing women in this uh, series, but I want to I want to highlight Ruth Roman at this particular point. And <laughs> boy, I tell you, uh, this was one of her very first uh, cinema efforts. One of her first. As a matter of fact, it was the first that she was in where she played the title role. She is the Jungle Queen. She's able to walk through fire. Yeah, she's a regular goddess, I must say. <laughs> And she is one who is to be listened to, yes. The one who must be obeyed, as it is in she. But anyway, um, she always had uh, show business in her. Her uh, father was a carnival barker, and her mom was a dancer. And together, her dad and her mom had this uh, sideshow in the carnivals. And uh, unfortunately, when Ruth was just eight, her dad died and uh, her mother had to take uh, various jobs just to keep the family afloat they they were not rich obviously and they lived in a, a in the poor section of Boston Massachusetts in a t uh, oh in some really uh, bad apartment buildings there yeah and she always wanted to to get out of that and 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 to be somebody Interestingly, her birth name was not Ruth, but rather it was Norma. But a fortune teller told her mom that Norma mm, mm, might bring bad luck. So they changed her name, not officially, but changed it to Ruth. And that's how Ruth Roman got her name. Roman is indeed the last name. So Ruth Roman went from being desperately poor, having lost her father, and um, became the sexiest woman in Hollywood, as she was sometimes referred to. <laughs> and uh, in this film, it was released in 1945. It was a um, serial, you know, they would show it once a week at the theater and they would leave each one. They ran about 20 minutes each. Uh, it's like a, it, would, it lift up with a cliffhanger that would get you to come back to the theater. And this would be, this would be shown with a feature film and a B film. And, um, you know, you, you just spend the whole afternoon or the whole evening at the theater. It was just, they didn't have televisions or anything at the time. So that's what this was part of. And um, these uh, serials were really, um, uh, qu quite quite fun, you know. They they were they were kind of nice. And um, uh, it was released in 1945. Ruth was just beginning her um, acting career, and when she saw the re-release in 1951, she was aghast. Her acting had so improved, she couldn't believe that there was a time when she acted so poorly. <laughs> she kept honing her craft, going to uh, uh, classes and and acting schools, etc. She was really a go-getter. She really need, wanted to improve herself all along the way and she had a long career that even went into television and um, just you know more power to her. She was uh, a person that took herself quite seriously. Um, so what we've done in this there's 13 episodes and we've divided it into three parts. So we took the 15 episodes instead of stringing them you know, all together, we've divided it into uh, three parts, three parts, four parts, so that we could show it in three. And um, you're you're in for a you're in for a good ride. Here here is a, a jungle queen. Now the jungle the importance of the jungle queen is that th this was a way that that, that uh, women could be seen in leadership roles. It was very rare in 1945, 1930, 1920 when women could have that. But here, by going to an exotic location, in this case Africa, she could be just that. And um, also this um, provided employment for African-American actors. Um, there weren't many opportunities, I must say, in, in uh, white Hollywood for uh, black actors and actresses. But in the jungle films, they actually could. 
And I'm very happy that they did it that way and they didn't do a blackface or something like that. That would have been terrible. Now, I will admit that they do show uh, the black natives as uh, simple and um, primitive, as it were. Uh, and, of course, the white people are always smarter. But you've got to remember the, the, the context, the, the era in which it was produced. And if, if, if you can put that in your head, then it's, uh, it makes a lot more sense. And I always like to think of the positives more than the negatives, but always be aware of the negatives. So here it is. Um, black actors in the 1940s, along with a white woman in a lead role in Hollywood as being central. I just, it's just great, just wonderful. Okay, I'm David the Bruce, let's go. Enemies have crept secretly into your little jungle. They planned this murder. Remember, throughout Europe, all military experts agree that the European nation which controls Africa controls the southern approaches to Europe. Boys, we aren't safe here. What do you mean? This is the middle jungle. The only territory in all Africa still unexplored. Now, where are the Nazis hiding my friends? There's no mines out there. You'll find your friends there. Who's in charge of Nazi agents here in Tambosa? Well, now I want you to come with me, Kaiba. I obey the gods. Europe, all military experts agree that the European nation which controls Africa controls the southern approaches to Europe. Yes, Your Excellency. Now, what about Africa? Any reports? From Tambosa. Our agents there are still working to gain the allegiance of the Middle Jungle tribes. How successfully? Until now, very successfully. But they are worried about a rumor concerning a mysterious queen of the jungle.
We're nearing Tangara now. Does that mean the ceremony has begun? Not yet, Buona Lang. But the long stout Tonga comes. Tonga's a friend of England. Is he also a friend of that mysterious girl you've been telling me about? The Tongili talk about the mystery queen of the jungle, but no one has ever seen her. Well, regardless of her, Marty, you want to rule the people of the middle jungle, don't you? I want to take Tonga's place. That's why I'm here. To help you get it. <laughs> Chiefs of all the tribes stand before me. Tonga, judge of all Tongili, guardian of the sacred sword of Tongu. This prisoner is of the Bondo tribe. He murdered a warrior of the Lodo. The chiefs of the two tribes do not agree as to his punishment. Bring the prisoner before me. my enemy. I ask for mercy. Tongu, found of all our tribe, enforce the laws with this sword. The laws of Tongu will be obeyed. Take the test. and hesitate, yet they, they alone, pass safely through the flames. Judges have lived, ruled, and died throughout the many centuries. Yet no man before now has raised hand against me. The mystery queen of the jungle. Why does she come? I come to help you. Enemies have crept secretly into your middle jungle. Unknown enemies. They come from across the wide waters. They plan this murder. I am called Lavelle. I am now your judge. You are my hunters. Bring me the murderer. in the middle jungle. Hello, Lang. Rogers. When did you return? My safari reached Mboza last night. As usual, thanks, Mr. Lang. I suppose you've heard of the murder of Tonga. Yes, the jungle rums told us. The commissioner wants very much to see you. If you don't mind, Dr. Bork, I won't wait. Of course, Mr. Lang. Hello, Dr. Bork. Hello, Mr. Chatham. I'm very glad to see you. Thank you. You don't happen to know whether Corton is bringing his safari in, do you? Alan Courtney. Is he in the middle jungle? Oh, yes. He took a safari out the week after you left. Uh, sit down, please. Thank you. Courtney is even a better friend of the Tongili than I am. But if I were in his place, 
I would not trust a native now. Unfortunately, that's up to Courtney. Did you hear anything in the jungle about Tonga's assassination? A strange story about a mysterious woman. According to the native, she appeared walking through fire just after the murder. <laughs> you know, that's one of the most interesting things about Africa. You never know where the truth ends and imagination begins. What did she do? Warn the Tongila against foreigners who come into the middle jungle. Oh, I see. That, that is serious. Know anything else about her? Only her name, Lothel. Lothel? Is that Tongili? Yes, it means white butterfly. He's badly wounded, sir. I, I come, Moana, from the Tongili. We need help. I find Tonga killer Lothel. Someone certainly didn't want him to reach us. He is dead. How he got here is a miracle. He must have been wounded two or three days ago. What did he mean, Lothel? I'm afraid that Lothel is a name we will not forget very soon. I'm afraid so too, Doctor. And now, if you'll excuse me. Of course, Mr. Chapman, I understand. Thank you. I knew you would. Goodbye. Why dismiss Dr. Bork, sir? She knows more about these natives than anyone except Alan Courtney. Dr. Bork isn't English, Rogers. I wish Courtney were here. Rogers, look there. That man has a message for us. She might have come out since I last heard. You've been there with him, have you not? Why, why yes, of course, of four safari. But you knew about that before. Well, the question's just for the record, my dear. Did you read the report I sent you about the trouble in the middle jungle? Yes, I did. But I still can't understand why the judge of the tribes was murdered. We think we know. But we have to be sure. That's why we want your uncle to investigate. I'm afraid that Tom Gailey would resent interference in native affairs. The native mentioned in the report, the one who died in our commissioner's office at Tambosa, had this clutched in his hand. I don't think that Tom Gailey wore custom-made American clothes, do you? No. If it were a German... Labels don't always mean what they say, my dear. Not when another world war is sure to come at any moment. Warmongering Nazis never take human rights into consideration. The control of certain localities may spell the difference between victory and defeat. Almost every foreign office in the world will agree that the nation which controls Africa controls all the southern approaches to Europe. In other words, if the Nazis control the Tongili, it will help them to control Africa. Yes. That's why I hope you'll take my request to your uncle. You're the one person in the world that can go to him openly without creating suspicion. Nine, seven, six, B, two, eight. Right out. We have our confirmation, sir. We instructed the United States about the Taylor's label. That was Washington acknowledging unofficial interest.
Ah, shut up. I don't want to repair any more cheap motors anyway. Uh, if I needed a mechanic, this is the last place in town I'd come to. Oh, yeah? Well, back that pile of junk right out of here. Back it out. <laughs> How are you, old greaseball? Fine, Bob. You know, you still got the worst case of pornitis I've ever heard. Well, rev it up. Maybe I can find a couple other cylinders for you. Oh, this engine doesn't need any more cylinders. I came here to talk business to you. Uh-oh, serious, huh? What's up? Well, uh, I thought that maybe if you could get away from this place... Hold it. Hold it. Just a minute. Oh, boy. I knew it. I knew it. You're planning another hunting trip. That's right. Doggone, this astrology stuff never fails. You know, the chart said I was going to take a trip sometime between the 10th and the 15th. How do you like that? Still trying to find out today what's going to happen tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Oh, I know. I used to be superstitious about it. But now I'm scientific. Well, I, I guess the old joint will be able to run itself for a couple of months. Where are we going? Well, a friend of mine in Washington was telling me about a place called Tambosa. Tambosa? Do you fry it, boil it, or bake it? <laughs> no, it's a river town down in Africa, on the edge of the middle jungle. And because of my curiosity, we may be walking into something. Huh? I mean, there's a chance we might not come back. Oh, you don't say so. Hmm. Africa, huh? Okay, it's a deal. What are we hunting for? Well, we won't know that until we meet an Englishman by the name of Alan Courtney in Tambosa. The Tambosa Report, Your Excellency. More about the so-called mystery tree of the jungle? No, but Pamela Courtney is now en route to our uncle, Alan Courtney. So England has finally decided to investigate our activities. Anything else? A New York tailor's label ripped from the coat of one of our agents was found in the jungle. Better New York than Berlin. What is Washington going to do about it? Nothing. Where's Miss Courtney now? She will take the night plane for Tambosa. Our men at Lombu have received orders. Excellent. Next stop, Tambosa. Bravo, here we come. Look, Chuck. If we can help the English, that's okay. They don't want us, we'll just hunt lions. Well, here's hoping the English can use some volunteer Americans, because I'd rather hunt Nazis. That's why I'm following up my friend's story. <laughs> you don't have to worry, Clance. Those motors sound perfect to me, Johan. I'm called Jack around here. One of those motors won't sound so good a little later. You won't see it happen. I don't want to see it happen. All I want to know is, are you sure it will happen? The weather report's not good either. Fine. One thing about this run I don't like. Commercial passengers and freight really don't mix, you know. Fasten your safety belts, please. Fasten your safety belts, please. Okay, thanks. I guess the weather isn't exactly what the pilot ordered. The weather's never good here. I've flown this route before. You're very interesting. Uh, I mean, that's very interesting. You live in these parts? No, I've been on safaris out of Tambosa with my uncle. Do you hunt? Uh, but never in Africa before. Why? I was wondering if you'd ever heard of my uncle, Alan Courtney. Well, I've read his books. I'm going to hunt in the middle jungle. I'm Bob Elliott. This is my friend Chuck Kelly. Well, welcome to Africa, Mr. Elliott and Mr. Kelly. I'm Pamela Courtney. Well, I hope you're flying to your uncle, Miss Courtney. I especially want to meet him. I shall join his safari. He's already in the middle jungle. Uh, American? Oh, yes, I am. I'm from New York, but uh, my friend here, he's from Brooklyn. Oh? The United States, Miss Courtney, is the other half of Brooklyn. <laughs>
time goes the signal. Too much competition. I know, it doesn't have to check out air course. How far are we from Tambosa? About two hours out. We're over the middle jungle now. Did you say middle jungle? Mm-hmm. What star's out of line now, Chuck? Stars are never out of line. But according to my astrology chart, we are plenty. That air screw counts out. Nothing will help us except luck and prayer. Drop another. This is one time in my life I'd rather be walking. On or off course won't matter now. Find consolation for a boss landing in the middle jungle. This sticks get up. I say, look there. Beyond that hill, it's flat and open. I'm ahead of you, old man. If we get over this ridge, we may live long enough to be clawed by a lion. I never thought we had a chance. Neither did I. You know, Chuck, that wasn't included in your book. Brakes don't hold. We can't have everything our own way. Nairobi via Tamboza took off on schedule, Your Excellency. Was everything arranged? According to Alombu agents, everything. Good. Germany has been kept out of Africa long enough. Hello there, Sheridan here. A storm over the middle jungle? You say your people have lost radio contact? All right, thank you. Let me know, will you? Storms are the usual on this route, sir. And no planes have ever crashed. Yes, yes, I know that, Rogers, but this plane is carrying an important passenger, Secret Service. Alan Courtney's niece, Pamela, sent here by London. She's to find her uncle in the jungle and persuade him to investigate our suspicions that the Nazis are stirring up the natives. Find consolation for a boss landing in the middle jungle. Let's take get up. I say, look there. Beyond that hill, it's flat and open. I'm ahead of you, old man. If we get over this ridge, we may live long enough to be clawed by a lion. I never thought we had a chance. Neither did I. You know, Chuck, that wasn't included in your book. Brakes don't hold. We can't have everything our own way.
How is she? Due to wake up with a headache. Otherwise, okay. Our pilots never had a chance. Bob. You know, this girl claiming to be Courtney's niece worries me. Maybe it's true. How can the Nazis suspect us when actually we're just traveling? The Nazis ain't bad hunters, Bob. Maybe she's a spy. We don't know if Courtney has a niece. Could be. But meeting her on the plane might be just a coincidence. Yeah, like you coming to meet Courtney and Tamboza. Accidentally, on purpose. Oh. Oh. Ooh. How do you feel? I think I'm still in one piece. You're lucky to get out of that crash alive. Yeah, but don't ask me how it happened, because I don't know. Anyway, we're safe. Boys, we aren't safe here. What do you mean? This is the middle jungle. Only territory in all Africa still unexplored. <laughs> Am I glad you said that? Oh. <laughs> All astrologers carry their good luck for you. <laughs> what do the stars say if we meet the natives? I don't need astrology to give me the answer to that one. Just stay clear of them. Tangili feel the same way about you. How well organized are they? Mm, more than you'd think. They're controlled by an all-powerful judge. When the chiefs disagree, he makes the decision. Then actually, this judge rules all the tribes of the middle jungle, doesn't he? Yes. He derives his power from a secret that only he and his successor know. Kamanova Omo, Kaluzargo Wataganza. So you see, it would be quite a nasty mess if the judge organized the tribes against England. Or if some other power persuaded him to do it and helped him. It would be just the sort of intrigue Germany would undertake, don't you think? <laughs> you sound like a Nazi. I say, I was just thinking the same thing about you. Nazis, unexplored jungle, wild animals, that does it. Tamboza, here I come. <laughs> Seriously, Lang, the control of Africa depends on us here, 
as much as Germany's worldwide plan depends on other key agents. Yes, I forgot. The high command is anxious to start the war. When will the new judge of the Tongi to be murdered? As soon as he's named his successor. You guarantee, do you, that our man will be chosen? I could yesterday. Why not today? The bell. The mystery queen of the jungle. duty to decide which one of you shall take my place when I'm gone. Always there are three candidates. Where is the third? I'm here, Godak, our new judge. You know us, Godak. We whom our chiefs have named for your consideration. You know also that once I saved your life. Orban, Kaiba, Mahdi. Each of you is worthy to succeed me, but there is need for only one, Marty. Tongu, our founder, named the first judge and gave to him this sword. Because I know the secret of this sword, I am now your judge, but... The woman who walks through fire comes to counsel with us. Open the door. I come again to warn you. There are enemies in the middle jungle. Set from across the wide waters. Choose the candidate who knows no strangers. Choose Kaiba. I am called Lothel. Take your time, Norma. Take your time. The big bird. It fell in the jungle. Did you find it? Yes, Water. And the trail of one woman and two men. I saw them. You don't look like a future judge to me. What happened? Lothel doesn't like me. She chose Kyber. She said Kyber didn't know strangers. How would you like to prove to Lothel that you hate strangers as much as she does? Very much. Lothel makes me afraid. I thought so. You listen to what Norma has to say, and then I'll tell you what to do. Hey, what are you waking up for? It's the girl's turn. Oh, let her sleep. I'd rather have you take over than her anyway. She was so determined to take her turn that I agreed. But after all, Chuck, what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Uh, what were you saying? <laughs> Uh-oh. Thanks for the consideration, boys. But you forget I've stood watch on safari before. And I wake up on time. It's much more comfortable in the cave than out here. Well, am I watching or all of us? This is a swell time for her to double cross us. She might be a Nazi Asian and still have no connection with the natives.
sign of a struggle either. My rifle's gone. Rumba, Naka, Zanga, Zanga. When your friends use all their bullets, my men will kill them. I will take you to Carker. So make Lothel, queen of the jungle, my friend. Andoka. This native's rifle would have killed us if it hadn't been for you. You saved me last trip. This one's on me. It's an old model. What's the difference, old or new? The point is, how do the Tongili happen to have rifles? Well, ask me. Hey, this is a Mauser. Yeah, made in Germany. Nazis? Yeah, the same Nazis that girl's probably out there. in the back wall, but it don't get any place. That's a good idea, taking a look. Well, we're sure on one thing. It's going to take more than an idea to help us when we run out of ammunition. I will help you. I am Lothel. You did not find the way, but I came here through it. Follow me. Wait a minute. Trust me. I trust you. conquest of Europe, I feel sure that we shall be able to control Africa. 
Therefore, gentlemen, Africa is our immediate problem. Code message from Tambosa by radio, Your Excellency. Mr. Lang, my expert on never getting what Germany wants from the Middle Jungle tribes. I'm glad my superior appreciates me. I've just told Berlin that Pamela Courtney escaped from the plane crash. You can tell Berlin that Marty has captured her. Indeed. Hello, Bella. Lang speaking. Put this into code for the High Command. The High Command? Headline. Pamela Courtney, who was sent by London to persuade her uncle Alan Courtney to investigate our murder of Tonga, the judge of the tribes, will be sacrificed tonight by the Tangini. When the fire goes out, Cocker will come up the steps. Americans won't help you. My men will kill them. I want Lothel, the queen of the jungle, to be my friend. We must tell Marty. A leopard smelled the blood of a wounded Tongili traitor. The English girl is in great danger. Come. After all, you've got to save her, Chuck. Monty, go tell, help the girl's two friends. Lothel's enemies. But Lothel warned us against strangers in the middle jungle. Lang is also a stranger. He wants these people killed. She doesn't. The Tongili will listen to Lothel. They will blame me if she is angry. The girl must live. Chuck, is that part of that other row? That's... He is our judge. Marty! Herr Manny fired! The village 
Nobody can stick around here long. We can get to the girl now. Look, hey. Tongili didn't quite make it. They tried hard enough. We started those fires, figuring the confusion would give us a chance to save you. Marty, the chief cut me loose. Said he was going to take me to Godak, the judge. Ooh, I wouldn't want to meet either of those birds. Well, there's one way of making sure we won't. You let that English girl and those Americans escape because you're afraid of hell. The Tongue really like Lothel very much. You can't be my friend of Lothel, too. I want Lothel to make me the judge. Sure, Mark. Sure. That's why she chose Kaiba. She thinks I'm not her friend. But I'll show her that I am. You shoot that and Noma will come with the warriors. Sit down, Marty. Now suppose I fix it so the Tongili will not like your mystery queen. You do that and I'll kill the English girl and the Americans before they leave the jungle. Fair enough. I've been planning that stunt ever since you told me how the judge was chosen. You shouldn't have let me sleep so long, boys. You needed it. Isn't that a polite way of saying you didn't want me to stand watch? Well, after all, Pam... If you didn't know if I was really Pam Courtney or a Nazi, isn't that it? Well, we thought you were leading us into a trap. We knew better when we saw you tied to that stake. I didn't trust you either. That's why I was letting you take me to San Bosa. You mean you really know where your uncle's camp is? Of course. Are you American agents sent to help him? Oh, no, no, no. We're American volunteers. I heard about this trouble here through a friend of mine in Washington. Why Nazis want to play marbles for keeps with anyone in this wilderness is still beyond me. Well, control the judge who rules the middle jungle tribes, and through him you pretty well control a large region in Africa. Sure, sure. But why did England ever bother to tell Washington all about this? Look. Fellows and Company, Custom Tellers, New York City. That label is connected in some way with the murder of Tonga, who was pro-British and Godak's predecessor. Nazis wearing American clothes, huh? Or Nazi spies who took out their citizenship papers to hide their German origin. I suggest you let me guide you to my uncle. He knows more about the Tongili than anyone else. Does he know this mysterious jungle queen who saved us? No, I doubt it. So do I. The fellow seems to have arrived here just about the same time we did. All right, Pam, lead the way. The foreign doctor, she's come to ask questions. I think my answers will please even her. Well, Lang, how about it? I think I can get enough fire out of the volcano to get the effect we want. It's due to erupt anyway. I hope it does. So much the better. The TNT I've already planted may encourage an eruption, but no explosion will ever stop one. What about Pamela Courtney and the two Americans? Her trail has been discovered. They're going deeper into the jungle. Indeed. Hunting for the girl's uncle, no doubt. She will never speak to him. They should be near the volcano tonight. And tomorrow, Marty will capture them and blame whatever happens on them. Oh, 
without this sword is my power. Only my successor can share the secret. Kaiba, I will tell it to you. Has Kaiba asked the approval of the gods? Do you want Kaiba to go to the mountain of fire? Any Tongili can demand that Kaiba take the test. Let him go to the mountain tonight. I do not question the fire that Tongu, our founder, worship. Tongu, the sword you bear. Go there. Strange is left in the ruined temples of the mountain. Who plans to slay them of your people? Last night she saved the strangers from the sacrifice to Karka. A village burned. She is a stranger also. I am no spell, and I harm no one. I come only to help you. Kaiba, do not go. Godak, our judge, shall decide. Go to the mountain. If its flames do not erupt tonight, you are worthy. And I shall tell you the secret of the sword tomorrow. Oh, take it easy, Marty. Are you sure? You'll be the judge alike for this time tomorrow. As soon as Godak tells me the secret of the sword, I will kill Godak. That is a general idea. Then I'll be the judge. Did you see Kaiba? Kaiba's gone to the old temple. He's there now. Now the ancient gods will tell Kaiba what they think of him. You break our tribal laws to come here. I come to plead with you. Leave this temple, Kaiba. If there's danger here for me, it is my destiny. The voices of your ancient gods are stilled. Strangers are here. in a plane. Then natives try to feed us to crocodiles. Now the mountain blows its top. We're much too close for comfort. I'll get my gift. This time I come to you for help. We're under obligation to you. You must save Godak's successor. If Kaiba dies, your enemies will rule the middle jungle. Come. You two hike back over the farthest ridge. Weenie sure gets around, don't she? 